Live from the Computer History Museum in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's the Cube, covering food IT, fork to farm. Brought to you by Western Digital. Hi, welcome back to theCUBE. I'm Lisa Martin. We are at the fourth annual Food IT Fork to Farm event at the Computer History Museum in the heart of Silicon Valley. I'm very excited to be joined by my next two guests. We have Curtis Garner, Senior Farm Analyst from Bowles Farming Company. Welcome. Thank you. Great to have you. And we have Megan Noon, CEO of Vinsight. Welcome. Thank you. Thank Great you. to have you guys here. So this event is so interesting for us. We cover a lot of technology innovation, a lot on the infrastructure side. This is more on the application side. But Curtis, I wanted to start with you being a farmer. Your farm is a sixth generation farm, Bulls Farming Company, based in Los Banos, California. Um, one of the things I found really interesting when I was doing some research on Bulls Farm is that you have a big, uh, solar project, and one of the things that's really interesting, it's been reported that the U.S. food system uses 15% of the total energy of the U.S. to produce food. Tell us about the solar project that Bulls Farms has done and what you've been saving on energy. Right, so with uh, Bulls Farming and agriculture in general, there's been kind of a stagnation of uh, innovation, and through um, technology drip irrigation, uh, we've seen a difference in technology from doing uh, gravity-fed irrigation, um, which is basically free energy, right? Gravity doesn't cost anything, to pressurized drip irrigation systems. And so we've used um, uh, pressurized pumps that use diesel and energy, and we've been switching them over to electricity, and that's been an efficiency for uh, bulls farming, but we've, um, we've uh, offset our costs by uh, two solar plants, and so we have two um, solar plants, uh, two 500 uh, kilowatt energy to generate one megawatt of energy. We've uh, displaced about 80% of our energy use on the farm. 80%, that's dramatic. Uh, was that a multi-year project that you initiated? It, it was supposed to happen about a year, but through regulation and, and uh, difficulties with permitting and pg and &E, it took about a year and a half to complete. Uh, we'll see the benefits of it this year. And your primary crops are cotton, tomatoes, nuts, almonds? So, yeah, we're a diversified, diversified row crop, so we have 12 different crops, but our primary crops are Pima cotton and processing tomatoes. So question for you, from a technology perspective, this event is so interesting because when I first read the title, I thought, fork to farm, we're so used to the trendiness of farm to table, right, mm -hmm. farm to fork. Mm -hmm. But the fact that the tech-enabled consumer is has really influenced, or wants to influence right. organic, must be cage-free, if it's eggs, it you know, must be non-genetic, et cetera. What are some of the influences that you're seeing on the farming side that the consumer is driving, and how has Bowles Farm made some changes to accommodate that? So our crop choice, uh, so the consumer is actually voting with their fork is actually a real thing, and so like, the most uh, posted uh, food picture on Instagram and uh, Pinterest is actually a purple vegetable. So a thought on the farm is, should we be growing a bunch of purple vegetables? And so it's, a, it's actually very real that the, the consumers are driving uh, production. Yeah, interesting. So Megan, as the CEO of Vinsight, talk to us about the genesis of Vinsight. You yourself come from a farming background. What was the, the origination of your company? Yeah, so um, I grew up in the Central Valley of California. I'm originally from a small town called Gustine. And um, I left Gustine, went to college in San Luis Obispo, Cal Poly, and then um, after that I worked for an aerospace company in the remote sensing space for about seven years. And while I was there, one of the things that we were looking at doing was providing um, satellite imagery to farmers and um, different growers. And quickly I realized that um, the traditional imagery that the satellite imagery business was providing through um, a it's called NDVI, which basically is a health map of red, green, and yellow. Um, wasn't necessarily helpful or terribly actionable, and that really bothered me. And so through lots of conversations um, and investigation uh, that I took on my own, I decided, you know what, it's time to start something on my own um, through utilizing different data techniques to better understand food production. And so uh, Vinsight was basically initially born out of the idea of utilizing satellite imagery in a more meaningful way um, to benefit growers and then the entire supply chain as a whole. 
and that later turned into crop forecasting for grapes and almonds here in California. And and especially, you know, grapes being huge, I mean, Napa, Edna Valley, yeah. Paso Robles, we're very fortunate to have a, a tremendous amount of grapes and, and wine opportunities, but you mentioned almonds, 90% of the world's almonds come from California. Yes. Talk to us about how, maybe an, an example of how a farm is using your technologies. Like, are you putting sensors in their firms yeah. or is it really they're utilizing satellite imagery and data acquisition through your product and API to improve their yields? So it's more of the latter. Um, at Vinsight, our objective is to be data agnostic. And so what that means is we take in data from any source that allows us to better understand production as a whole. And so what happens is we collect data from four major categories, which include remote sensing data or satellite imagery, climate and weather, um, historical yields, and then geographical information. So primarily that'll be like soil type, elevation, angling, and so on. Um, and what we do is we've built out this 20 year historical archive and we've utilized machine learning techniques to train on that data and understand what matters to the plant at this specific point in time and how does that correlate and trend against what we've seen in the past. And so in real time during the growing season, we pull in like the top 10 features that matter um, to that plant at that specific time. And then we give you a crop forecast of, hey, you're going to produce so many pounds or tons, depending on the industry, um, of X product. And we're assuming a 10% or better error rate typically um, on understanding your total production. And so our goal is through starting with understanding your total supply, how can that also start to relate into how we handle pricing and how that ultimately will benefit both the grower and consumer at the end of the day. Interesting, so about the, the production yields, I wanted to kind of talk, uh, Curtis, to you about, if you look at the food chain from planting um, through you know, monitoring soil conditions, fertilizers, water, we've just gotten out of a massive drought here in California. Yeah. One other thing that, it's, that I find interesting is the post-harvest. Um, arena and you know supply chain logistics traceability. Mm -hmm. um, talking about almonds, I was reading, and this was very surprising uh, to me that in the last three years, over 35 truckloads of almonds have vanished, yeah. Yeah. and that's tantamount to 10 million dollars. So on the traceability side, I know that's going to be one of the themes at the event today. Uh, how are you using technology, Curtis, at Bulls Farms on the traceability? Can you give us some examples there? Yeah, so traceability is a very big deal for the farm and the consumer and the producer. And so um, Bulls Farming has actually a pretty unique story about this in that um, our cotton that we grow is a Pima cotton. Costco uh, sold a bed sheets that were uh, Pima cotton and they had the, the olive oil scandal. The same guy that did that uh, did a market sweep of all the Pima cotton sheets that represented that they're 100% Pima. He found that over half the supply was actually adulterated. It was actually not Pima cotton, it was upland or primarily a blend. And so with that, he applied the same technology that he did with olive oil to the cotton industry. And we were the first farm and the first gin to sign up with them to do traceability um, from basically from farm all the way to sheets. Yeah, so. Wow, farm the to sheets. Farm Didn't to sheets, yeah. That today. <laughs> yeah, exactly, so they're now, uh, it's the brand is uh, Watsuma, the uh, Pima cotton brand, and they're available at uh, Bed Bath & Beyond. Wow, so looking at what Megan has done with Finsight, being a sixth generational, sixth generation mm -hmm. farm, yep. what's the, um, what, what are your thoughts as a senior farm analyst on the adoption of technology? Um, it, was it something that was slow to be adopted or do you really feel we've been so successful for six generations, we want to understand how we can look at data types that are aggregated as Megan, you said over 20 years of historical information. Right. What's been that adoption at your farm? So Bulls has a legacy of innovation and uh, we're an innovative farm and we have a lot of uh, innovative people and so for us it's a matter of survival. So with the regulatory pressures with the increasing cost of farming in California, uh, innovation's going to be key and that's going to come in the role of, of technology and so we're uh, pretty quick to adopt. Um, if you look at farmers as a whole, uh, people think that they're overall wearing individuals that aren't very intelligent, um, but <laughs> it's actually quite the opposite. And if a new technology comes that has a great ROI, just like the drip irrigation, uh, they'll implement that uh, pretty quickly. Oh, fantastic. Well, Curtis, we wish you the best of luck at Bowles Farms. Megan, yeah. same congratulations on Vinsight. We Thanks. wish you the very best of luck, and we thank you both for joining us on theCUBE. Thank, thank you. you. We want to thank you for watching again. We are at the Food IT Fork to Farm Summit in the heart of Silicon Valley. I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE. Stick around. We'll be right back.